On Friday, we walked to see the local ruins. They're technically in Kohlerbach, and we live in Putlingen, but they're only about a 20-minute walk from the house. This was the first time we walked around town. I love looking at all the different houses. Instead of the houses looking practically identical like they are in the state, every house has something different about it. Some little detail that makes it unique from the paint or the molding on the windows to the tiling or just its shape in general, something makes it unique. I've noticed that a lot of houses have some sort of ironwork or detailing that they'll place on the outside to help make that more unique and make it more of their own home. And that's just something you don't see very often in the States, like even in the suburbs. So every time we go out, like even if it's on a street we've driven past before, I'm like staring out the window, just like absorbing all the different little details. Um, some of them I've noticed before and I notice every time like there's this one house with a little itty bitty heart shaped window that I think is just adorable. But other times there are things like I haven't noticed it before because I was taken back by an orange house or a greenhouse. And so I don't notice the really cool tiling on it later. Um, and it's, it's, for me, it's really fun. And it reminds me of all the times that Megan and I would just, like, drive around at night eating ice cream and looking at all the different houses. And um, we would call it house hunting. And we'd go and we'd take the little flyers for houses that are going to be sold. And um, knowing we could never afford to buy one, but just being able to look inside and see it um, makes me miss those moments. On our walk, we walked over an old bridge on and along a little cemetery with a couple of churches. Um, I'm one of those weird people who like to wander around cemeteries, and so I was hoping this was an old one because, you know, those are the best cemeteries to wander in. And I didn't get to see any of the dates on the headstones, but what I from could see, some of them were older as well as some were rather new ones. So I don't think this section, at least, was very old. But what was interesting about this cemetery as we were walking by was that most of the headstones were small and similar in shape. You really can't see it on the film here, unfortunately. In most of the cemeteries in the States, you'll see a wide variety of headstones in colors and shapes. And it made me wonder why there was such a difference, if it was just this particular cemetery or if it was like a German tradition or something like that. Um, so, two of the churches that we passed, um, one was a Catholic church and the other was a Protestant church. The Protestant church is the more simple and older one, and um, it's actually one of the oldest, if not the oldest, church in Thailand, which is really cool. We haven't been inside yet, but it is on my list of things to do, as well as probably, um, we'll probably go inside the Catholic church too, just because it's really pretty and it's old by any standard. I have to go off of at this point. And then after we passed that, we got to the actual Castle Ruins themselves, and there was a little playground there, and houses backed right up to the castle, and there was a little soccer field. Um, the restrooms at the playground were covered in a more familiar looking graffiti, um, but it was still more colorful than what I'm used to seeing in Boise, and I just had to point that out after the last video with the whole graffiti talk. Um, the playground was too wet to use, or you know me, I would have been out there in an instant, but they did have a few cool toys that you don't find in the States anymore, like a teeter-totter and a tire swing, um, but they only had one regular swing, which is sad, because I judge playgrounds on their slides and their swings, and neither was really awesome. Um, the castle itself is a little bit different than some other castle ruins around Germany because it wasn't destroyed, but it was rather taken apart. Then Dad was telling us that whoever lived there moved and told the people they could use the stones. So it was taken apart and put into homes around town. This was, of course, a long time ago. It would have been nice to do a little more research before we went to find out more about this particular castle and some of the stories its walls hold. Walking around on the ground was an interesting feeling. I could see where the different parts were and I could feel the history of the place. A feeling I hope I don't get too acclimated to here where history is all around me. It's a difficult feeling to describe. That feeling 
of a weight but being pulled at the same time, not forcefully, but as if the place is drawing you towards it, calling for you to listen to what it has to tell you, what it can teach you of the past. It's the same feeling I get when I write a story. It's as if the story itself wants to be told, wants to be heard. <laughs> Do you know that feeling I'm talking about? And I might be nerding out on you. But it's because of this feeling, this presence of history that I study literature. Because of the stories that have been told and are waiting to be told is what creates life for me. It's what makes life exciting and interesting and worth exploring. We found this room that's locked full of stuff. In the castle. And there's a map. I'm going to see if I can... Ha <laughs> ha! What do you still think? Like, yeah. That is what I would assume they think it looked like. I'm sure it tells you what rooms were what, but... Ha <laughs> ha! But then why would they have this locked? Probably because there's nobody here to... Watch it. Watch it. Next time you're in a place that is new to you but has stories to tell, stop and let it whisper its story to you.